Uh, good day all, welcome back to a cold South Africa and this is South African Prepper. So uh, we haven't made some videos in about two weeks, so welcome back and uh, thank you all for subscribing, liking and then sharing as well. So uh, for this video we're going to be talking about the different levels of prepping, um, the system that is designed to screw you and then the solution so let's jump into it so um, i cannot take credit for the information that i'm about to give you because uh, many years ago we went to a agricultural conference and a very old and wise industrial psychologist actually explained the the thinking and the different levels of uh, people around the world so um this application can be used in business, um, in normal society, um, in your family as well. So it is something that is uh, applicable to, to more or less everyday life. So um, it is made up of different tiers or different levels okay, of thinking. Um, and the first level is the type of person that literally does no planning so the example he used was uh, the old bushman people in south africa just as an example so he says that um, they wake up one morning and he goes oh i'm hungry okay so he uh, gets up he grabs his uh, spear or his bow and arrow and he go and he looks for the necessary plants uh, to produce the poison that he puts on the tips of the spear or then uh, the bow and arrow and he goes out and he hunts, he gets his food, he eats, he's very happy and then the next two days he wakes up one morning again and he goes, oh shucks, I am hungry again. So this specific baseline bottom tier does absolutely no planning. So the Bushman example is just an example, okay? Don't get offended by it. The next tier is the person that can plan between one day and three days, okay? So it is literally living day by day planning, right? <clears throat> the next person, and we're going to start to translate this into what this channel is all about, and that is being prepared. Okay, so I want to quickly pause here, uh, the one to two day people, okay, the people that are planning day by day. Now, you all remember in 2020 when lockdown was announced, okay, what happened? A lot of people jumped into their cars, drove to the store, okay, and for some odd reason, they all and went and bought toilet paper, okay, they should have bought food, but anyway. Uh, a lot of them did buy food as well, but that is the one to three day category. Now, on average, in any home, in any Western country, you would most possibly find enough food for one to three days, okay? Most families would have the necessary stuff to survive for one to three days. But here comes the next category. That, those are the people that are preparing for one to 30 days so one full month okay and uh, I quickly want to pause here as well because a lot of people do not have enough food in their homes to sustain their family for 30 days straight so let's say for some reason something happens and you cannot jump into your car you cannot go buy the week's groceries okay will your family survive so that is the one to 30 day category okay so that's the next tier that's the third step in this tier building and then <clears throat> our next category is the one to five year category and i do believe the one to five year category is where most preppers fall into okay most preppers that i know personally most of you on this channel you do have enough provisions, you do have enough equipment and skills, okay, in order for you to survive at least one year on whatever you've stored away, okay. 
The problem comes in the one to five years. Okay, and this is where there is a bit of a bridge that is built because you will understand this with the next tier. Okay, the next tier is between 10 and 15 years. So I quickly want to just go back to the one to five years tiers. A lot of preppers do prep for a disaster, a collapse. A grid collapse, maybe a financial collapse, a personal collapse, whatever you are preparing for. Okay, because we all have, we are all preparing for a disaster, a natural disaster maybe. The problem comes in is that a vast majority, and I would say possibly 90, 95% of the preparedness community are literally only preparing for the disaster okay now the disaster doesn't matter what it could be or how it looks like could be for many many years i mean look at let's take an example the ukrainian war it's been going on for more than 12 months plus already okay for the south africans you look at zimbabwe okay it's been going on for yes 10 years plus now that is how long that specific disaster or tragedy has taken place and, it's in, in, and it is still occurring. It doesn't stop. So a lot of preppers get stuck between the one and the five year and they only prepare for the disaster. Okay. Now it's very good to prepare for the disaster because you are definitely ahead of the rest. Okay. The normal average person runs between 1 and 30 days, okay? I personally know that most people will not survive one week without going to the store. Even if it's for the basic, bread and milk, basic stuff, basic stuff, okay. So, the next tier is the 10 to 15 years tier, okay? 10 to 15, 1, 5, okay? Now, this is where I personally believe there are no preppers, that are prepared for between 10 and 15 years. And this is where the Brits comes in. This is a total different category. This category, I want to name the homesteaders or the small farms or in Afrikaans language, an opstal. The old people used to have opstaller. Okay. So these are the people that are able to produce their own food now if you go into the let's call it the homesteading or the small farm category between 10 and 15 years okay this category you can also subdivide into different tiers so you've got small farms okay that are self-sustainable at 25 percent so they are producing enough food for them so they can supply 25 percent of their daily or monthly needs then you get the 50 percenters the 75 percenters and then the top of the tier is the 90 90 percent of small farm sustainability okay there is no such thing as 100 percent because there are certain things that small farms just cannot produce themselves things like fuel things like uh, parts for the tractors um, you get the idea. Things that farmers or small farmers or homesteaders or, or upstallers just cannot produce themselves. But if you get to the highest tier of the small farmers or the homesteaders that are 90%, this basically means that you are literally feeding your family from that piece of land yourself. Okay, and you may be buying in some petrol or diesel to run your your tractors and your implements you may be buying in some feeds to feed the chickens so they can lay eggs you may be buying in some uh, medicines for your family and for your animals uh, there are just certain things that small farmers even commercial farmers i want to quickly stand still at the commercial farmers and 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 the system and here, here we're going to get to to why this system is built the system is designed to screw you okay totally 
So let's quickly go back to the tier of one to three days. So this is a very unfortunate tier because these people literally live day by day. Okay. So one morning they wake up and they realize, shucks, I don't have enough money to carry me through the month. Okay. And then they actually go borrow money. And the next month the same happens, the next time the same happens. And they get themselves into so much debt that they actually cannot get out of it. Okay. It's the same for the the next tier, which is the one day to 30 day. Now the one to three days and the one to 30 days over, do overlap a little bit. But these people are exactly the same. Um, on day 25 of the month, he realizes he hasn't got enough money to push him through um, to the end of the month so he goes and he borrows money okay to survive to pay everything okay and rinse and repeat this continues and he falls into a debt that he just cannot repay now the next tier is the one year to five year tiers okay and they also fall into the very same trap the only difference is is that they are actually planning the debt Okay, so I'll give you an example. In South Africa, if you buy a vehicle, you can pay it off in five years. So the person living in the one to five years planning mindset, okay, knows. Okay, I've got a, I've got a decent job. I can pay this vehicle off in the next five years. Okay, now five years is an extremely long time to be paying for something that gets used up over time a vehicle can only last so long no vehicle no tractor no implement is actually an asset because they will always cost you money they will always break they always need to be serviced they always need new tires okay so this is how the system is designed to totally screw you it is designed to get you indebted so they can eventually control you so let's quickly uh, stand still at the homesteaders where people are actually looking after themselves. So let's quickly just recap a bit. So we've spoken about the first year. The, remember the bushman that's hungry, he goes out, he catches uh, or shoots something and he eats and for two days he's happy. Then you've got the one to three days tier. You've got the one to 30 day. Okay which I believe a lot of our people are in, a lot of middle class, lower middle class, uh, Western people are in this category, and then your one to five years, which are most of your peppers, and then your 10 to 15 years, which has got no peppers in, we are going to rename it to small farmers and homesteaders, or in Afrikaans, opstallers, and these are the people that can actually produce for themselves now it's very interesting um, how the system is designed so I want to explain to you our commercial farm works so a commercial farmer doesn't matter where he is in the world okay he literally specializes in only a few things I'll give you an example we plant maize okay and we rotate it with either soya beans sunflowers and that is how we rotate and then winter winter wheat okay and that is literally what we specialize in and then on the side you've got some cattle maybe or some sheep um, and that is the only thing that you produce and what happens is you tend to harvest and you tend to sell all of those uh, maize sunflowers soya beans uh, winter wheat because it is just too much for you to actually you can only eat so much of maize or wheat or sunflowers okay and then you have maybe your little cattle and your little herd of sheep on the side so the system is designed in such a way that even though you are a commercial farmer okay you can actually not be a category of a homesteader where you produce 25 50 75 or 90 percent of your own food okay now there's a lot of stuff on on youtube about homesteaders you can go and and, and look at it there's a lot of things okay homesteaders 
that are literally feeding their own families. So the point I'm trying to make is that we have got different levels of preppers in the prepared community. And what is extremely worrying to me is that we have very few, in South Africa especially, very few preppers that fall between the 10 and the 15 years of category. We are all preparing for the disaster. Now, I want to give you another example. If you breed cows or sheep or goats, okay, you can go and ask a farmer that specifically breeds with cows, sheep and goats, okay, and he will tell you how many years it actually takes to build a good productive herd of cattle, sheep or goats, okay? How many years it actually takes to produce a herd that is productive? So to give you an idea how it works is, is um, you take out the animals that doesn't produce very well, you take out the female animals that may be not good parents, you take out the female animals that maybe when they are pregnant don't give enough milk, uh, to their to their babies, um, and you selectively breed so that at the end of the day you've got the strongest herd possible. Okay. We do not have preppers or homesteaders in South Africa that are planning for the long term. There are very few preppers and organisations, and I want to give you another example. And this is where the solution comes in. In South Africa, we've got a town called Urania. Okay, they, they are literally self-sufficient. But not completely. Because here's the, here's the thing. They can produce their own power. They can produce their own water. Okay, for about, I think there's about 3,000 people living in Urania. They can produce sheltering or housing for those 3,000 people. Okay, if you do have the money to go build a house there. Okay, they can provide you with safety and security. But here's the catch. They cannot produce their own food. They cannot produce enough of their own food. So it's good and well to have the water and the accommodations, the housing and the electricity and the safety. Okay, but there's one thing that we are all guaranteed to do at least two to three times a day and that is to eat <laughs> to eat any person anywhere in the world i don't care who you are you can be bill gates you have to eat at least once a day that is a necessity you have to drink water every single day it's a necessity you are gonna die if you don't do it every single day so i want to recap again We've got the category of no planning, the Bushman, the one, two, three days category, day-to-day -day planning, the person that lives between or plans between one and 30 days, uh, and then the next year is one to five years, and then 10 to 15 years, and then you can carry on. You've got the person that is planning 20 to 30 years, and then the person that plans between 50 and 100 years. And then on top of that, you have got the cabal families, the families that run the world, and they plan up to about 5,000 years in advance. So um, think about it, okay, digest it. It's an extremely difficult thing to realize that your prepping will possibly save your life. It will possibly make your life easier. But what after? The SHTF happened. What are you going to do afterwards? This is South African Prepper. God bless and uh, have a good weekend.